Hey, yo, what's going on? How you like the new RAF shirt? Well, actually, there's a bunch of designs. This is the latest one that I have. <coughs> it's the evening of Tuesday, the 27th of September, and I just have this stack of records that has been piling up. Um, I have purposely been tuning out the presidential debate and madness, and so... I have all these records I've been playing instead. I'll go through some of them and share some thoughts with you about them. I'll also share with you that I know I'm not alone, but apparently I'm on the fringe of of the mainstream where I just very plainly see the absolute sham of the presidential debate and just how broken the system is so that it's like I'll participate, but it's like you know, it's just in ruins to me, you know, in ruins. It's just, there was no point in watching that debate. What a joke. Okay, I just got done playing this. Rare to play it. Glad I kept it. Gavin Friday and the man Caesar. Um, each man kills the thing he loves. So I have to use these Yes great band on here where he has Bill Frizzell and Mark Rebo, Rebo and guitar and um, the thing that caught my attention because again it's about his interpretation he has quite the voice he's quite a character he was in the Virgin Prunes you know so his version of the Jacques Brel song Next which has been done by uh, Scott Walker and uh Sensational Alex Harvey band. This is a really potent um, version on here. Um, Alex Harvey's I like a lot too. This one is pretty strong. This is in good listen. Some math rock. I've just been, you know, going in through contrast musically. Behold the octopus. And this is uh, nanonucleonic. Uh, Cyborg Summoning is, Summoning is the name of this album. It's a one-sided white vinyl um, etched on one side. I've shown this a long time ago. This is very good in my opinion. Um, they call it math rock. It's just very intricately arranged and well played. Here it is. I've shown this before. White vinyl. Um, I saw the members of this band or well Colin Marston I saw him play in his band Dysrhythmia several years ago was really blown away by his um, technique I really enjoy this really enjoy this in contrast to that I listened to some Jorge Ben Ten Años de Poix uh, I can't speak um, intelligently about Jorge Ben uh, I just know that his interpretation of, of the songs that he does, his voice, the way that he arranges things, it's just just the word that comes to mind is wonderful. Just wonderful. Um, it's like taking the top of the house off and the sun is shining and it just feels really good when this music, when, he, when Jorge Ben plays and sings. Hadn't played any John Fox in a while. The man who... Um, Originally sang and probably, you know, helped start the band Ultravox. A couple of t 12 inches here I played. Europe, After the Rain. Love these songs. Um, his voice actually is, I like his voice. Um, it's almost like he can almost not sing. And yet, he puts himself so into it. And I like his compositions and... <coughs> You know, John Fox and Ultravox were, like, kind of on the cutting edge of electronic rock, you know. Here's another one. Dancing Like a Gun. I particularly like the B-sides. Swimmer number two is the one. A gem of an instrumental B-side. Just really good electronic um, rock pop. Just really good. Play this again. So I'm going to show it again. American Cream, Nathan. Um, man, this is really good. It just crunches and he drones along just wonderfully. Very much like 
Faust and Neu. American Cream, if you don't know this, check this out. When this came out, I just really immediately connected with it. And um, it, the connection is still there. I've played this probably 10 times since I pulled it yesterday. Radiohead, G Give Up the Ghost Remix. And I believe it's the B-Side Codex, that remix, which is the one that just really hits me. I feel it. I have to admit to you that um, it, it brings a tear. I just feel it. It's, I don't know what in the world he's saying. I feel it really strong. It's a melancholy type of... Yeah, I think this is wonderful. Just one of my favorite Radiohead records. This particular 12-inch single. Another absolutely fantastic piece of music. George Russell's Electronic Sonata for Souls Loved by Nature. I mean, the lineup with Jan Garbrick and Terge, Terge Riptol, Terry Riptol, Manfred Schuf, Red Mitchell, good Lord, John Christensen. And then what they do, you know... Um, with the addition of this electronic tape that was prepared for this. This is incredibly good. Very, very potent. Excellent. And this is a reissue on Strata East. It originally came out on Flying Dutchman. Always loved this band. And last night, it was a com full play all the way. Side one and two. Wigwam. Nuclear Nightclub. Band based out of Finland. <clears throat> Jim Pembroke was an American, the singer, and I guess principal songwriter. Just a lovely album. Progressive rock, but also it could be pop. There's even a bit of country sometimes. Love that cover too. Wigwam. A fairly recent addition to my collection, Joel Van Drogenbroek, the man who started the band Brain Ticket but is also known for his work in library music and soundscaping. This is Biomechanoid, um, synthesizer album made for color sound, a, a library music album. This is just killer. Um, a synthesizer tour de force, just really out there, really out there, really strong. And the H.R. Geiger cover, uh, um, painting on the cover is quite appropriate. Quite appropriate. Watched Roger Coleman as well as a few other uh, VC members' recent um, videos, and Roger showed where he had just uh, gotten a copy of this, Don Cherry's Complete Communion, and this is such a killer jazz album that I had to pull it. I do happen to have an original mono uh, pressing. Uh, collectors who collect like to know that stuff, but this is just a really just a dynamic session where the compositions are really strong and the way that the people interpret it, it's like they're really saying things on point, you know, like listening to a really good sermon, if that's what you're into. Really good. Here is one where I've shown it before and mistakenly said the band was from somewhere they're not, so I forget where it is they're from, but this is a damn good album. Space Opera came out in 1972. There's a, a lot of country in on in the sound, um, but it's also got this progressive aspect to it with really good guitar interplay and some wonderful vocal harmonies. I like this album a lot, Space Opera. Probably not hard to find, I don't think. Probably not, this is probably not an expensive one to find. Space Opera, this is good. I'll tell you, you know, just having to block out the madness of the current world with, you know, just everyone just seemingly blindly um, caught up in Trump madness. It's just really, uh, uh, I I'm at a loss for words for how it just boggles my mind, how unbalanced everything is now. And people are just lost in madness, it seems, you know, I just... You know, and even though I didn't watch the debate, I couldn't escape finding out about it through, you know, when I go to look at the news, I do like to interact on Facebook 
and Facebook was, is still just a sick mess with Trump and Clinton, just sick. So, noise ban, Terminal Cheesecake, who I understand have gotten back together. Um, VCL is the, is the name of this. Um, noisy, um, not really like Sonic Youth. If you know this band, you know what I'm talking about. It's uh, it's so noisy. You, it's not metal, but it's like it's heavy, and and kind of punk too at the same time. Terminal Cheesecake. It's good stuff. I listened to both sides of this. I did. Yeah. Love the what the just the high volume feedback way the guitars are used on this Terminal Cheesecake. Moby Grape, wow, I have this and the Grape Jam. This is mostly country, but there's a psychedelic and pop aspect to it as well. Uh, I can listen to country and I don't mind a little bit of it, you know. When it comes to country, it does draw me into listening to the whole song, the words, because that's what it's about. But besides this having one of the best covers of, an, of a rock album, it's weird. And it's got this track on it that is cut at 78 RPM. Weird. Egberto Gismonti group with Jacques Morlenbaum in Fancia. This one features um, Gismonti mostly on piano. He plays guitar amazingly as well, which is what I really like by him. But this is, uh, again, ECM. It's got that high standard of everything going on about it. Really good album. I played this a few times, uh, Roger. I really like this, Kylisa. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have more records that I didn't get to. And I need to put those away. Okay, I didn't show these, but they're still sitting out. A few days ago, or maybe it was last week, I played this Russ Giger, Hexagram 16. Yeah, he was a member of the pop band The Association back in the 60s and 70s. And he's a good songwriter, and this album has a, a, a range of, of musical styles that he uses to present his songs. Um, I just really like it. He, he draws you into what he's into. So it's like blues, country, bluegrass, pop and a bit of rock and roll really good album actually here's one that has survived or is this a second copy I don't remember but I discovered this as a cutout as a teenager fusion border town and this is uh, I just love this album it has a mashup of styles where it goes from like country rock, blues, and Cajun to downright psychedelic fusion jazz. Time of the Ostrich Head, I recently uh, posted a clip of it on Instagram because I don't think anyone's heard the song. It's on the B side, uh, on the second side of the album. Uh, I think it's an excellent example of psychedelic uh, jazz rock, and this was made in 1969. I love this album. I've played this a few times since it's been sitting out. Fusion. And another thing about it is Ry Cooter, the guitarist, is on the album and plays some amazing solos on here. Going back to Germany, and um, uh, I can't explain the fondness I have for German music and actually German culture, even though I could have a lot of reasons not to, but I really do like the Germans, always have. And I played La Dusseldorf's Viva all the way through. This is just great. This is just great in that uh, harmonia, noi, um, way of approaching the motoric beat and the psychedelic sound, the mix of the, 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 the instruments and the melodies. It's close to pop, but it's just 
not. It's it's like almost hallucinatory. I love this album, La Dusseldorf Viva. I used to have the first Dukes of Stratosphere album, 25 o'clock. Sadly, I sold it, but I do have this one, Sonic Sunspot, and I like it just as well. As, as you probably know, or some know, Dukes of Stratosphere was a side project of XTC. It's really obvious when you listen that it's XTC. But they pay homage in their songwriting to their heroes, and they do a Pet Sounds Brian Wilson pastiche on here that, it's, for all I know, it's, it's, it is Brian Wilson. It's just spot on perfect. One of my favorite albums of all time, Brighter Later by Nick Drake. This is the American release on Antilles that came out in the 70s. The whole album, I played it all the way through. I love the strings, the string arrangements by Nick Kirby. I love the feeling of Nick Drake singing and his guitar playing. Um, I sometimes listen to the words, but mostly it's the entire effect that that's that's all I need. It just takes me to a place that I want to be. Brighter later, Nick Drake, fantastic album, and also the I wish I had the Boris album. There's a Boris album where they uh, do a um, the cover is the same as this, but it you know some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, a band that I don't play often because the music is really icy and almost militaristic, but when I'm in the mood, I love it. In the Nursery, Coda, um, fronted by uh, a pair of twins, some twins. And um, they apparently uh, really are into military drumming because they use it on all their records. And also um, sampled strings, but obviously sta sampled to give this really sharp, like I say, icy kind of effect that... Um, at the right time, this is really compelling listening. It's really good. Pop psych album from the end of the 60s, early 70s, Thorin Shield. Um, these guys in the band have um, backgrounds with other music I can't remember to, to say offhand. But um, this is one that has been discovered a bit recently by record collectors. And um, by all means, check this one out. This, uh, I'm going to show the uh, label because this is listed as a promo. But I don't think this is a promo because American Phillips promos were white label that said promo. This just does, happens to not be a black Phillips label. This is kind of unusual. But it doesn't say promo anywhere. So I don't know that this is a promo but apparently this is the uh, copy that's harder to find with this label according to Discogs good album check it out as I say say before all this music can be found online here's an album <coughs> that I thought I was gonna put up for trade something I bought because I played a show where um, um, I opened up for these guys. I think I was playing with Kleeman from Denmark and we played a show with You and Yorn. It Would Make Things Worse is the name of the album. And um, I put this on thinking I was going to sell it. Oh man, this is really good. A duo, a couple I think. Lo-fi is not the right word, but simple. You know, using a at times children's toys and just a guitar sparse arrangements but very personal and just very personal but blunt songs the words do catch my attention because they're talking about their lives and they just say it in a real plain way which is one of the things i liked about what people call emo um i, just, I did like the nakedness of where a lot of that was coming from i, I think a lot about the uh Omaha bands that I know, Cursive and, and Connor and Bright Eyes. Some of their lyric things where they're just bearing their souls, you know. I could get with it, you know. Even if I couldn't always get with the music. Let me see if I have anything else to show. 
Well, something else I have to show um, that is just almost cheesy, but it's just weird. This Japanese uh, comp uh, various artists. Invitation to the Wonderful Synthesizer Land. Look at that cover. And that is a good indication of what this album sounds like. It's like it's... Is this serious? What is this, you know? You know, it's almost like a demonstration record that they would use in a hi-fi store back in the day. But um, unusual, and I love stuff like this. And it's the, all the players, whose none of the names I recognize, when I, once I found it online. When I first got this years ago, I couldn't find it online. I couldn't find any information about it. But uh, really cool, really cool. Is that it? Have I shown you everything? I think I have. I just need to put the rest of these records away. Okay, I will. I just want to always try to say um, a, a word, a real word to people. Um, encouraging, I don't know, you know. You know, the way the world is is apparently where it's supposed to be. I'm just sorry that I'm so aware of it. I don't wish that I was ignorant and brain dead so that I would just be washed along like, you know, the great unwashed. And that again is not a, a diss, it's just a fact, you know. Um, but the um, current climate socially and psychically on this planet is just dismal. And thank goodness for music and friendship, you know, because um, uh, people that have the resources and the ability to manipulate um, media and, um, and television and publications are just doing their damnedest to just poke people in the side, you know, and keep people divided and make people more divided and more distracted and less thinking and more reactionary and more hateful. This is what I see every time I turn on the, I, the news, I turn on the radio. It's like, I mean, I think it's really awful that when I, I like to listen to the hourly, the hourly and half hourly news and unless there's some major tragedy for the last year the very first word or one of the first words you hear from a news broadcast is fucking word Trump and it's poisonous but it's working so well that we're shell-shocked and traumatized to the point that we just I don't know, but I just have to talk about it because it bothers the shit out of me. So as always, I try to think of a positive way to end the video and I want to say this, that it appears to me that the VC is empowering to a lot of people and I notice that People who are drawn to my videos um, are all kinds of people, you know, real people of all ages. And it seems that for some reason, the way that I do my videos gives them the impetus, the inspiration to share their lives. And even if I don't watch all of you, I think it's a wonderful thing that it's happening, you know. And if that's the main thing you take away from these videos, that's the best thing that I can do is to encourage and just encourage empowerment on all levels, you know. Be yourself. Be yourself. Proudly be yourself. Um, be aware and wizened to the ways of the sick people that are constantly out in this world trying to mess up the party. Know that you're above it. Know that you're better than it. And persevere because it goes on and it's going to go on. And I watch other people's videos and see 
where people deal with with really sick people. I'm not going to reduce myself to their level and call them names. I'm going to call them what they are. Um, unfortunately, these people are probably jealous, unhappy, not well. Something that something that is not well good for them and somehow they want to aim it at us and i'll say it like that us know the truth people okay because going all the way back to childhood and in school because i was one of those kids i was a nerd that got picked on you know unjustly and merely because i <laughs> was kind of clueless you know don't stand for it okay don't stand for it we don't we we are the best and we are the ones who make things better in this world and if anything the challenge goes out to those who would try to um, try to uh, mess with us it's like they challenge you what what do you have to offer what have you done what are you doing that's worth anything And if you have really have something to say, get your butt on, on here and make some videos and see how it feels. Much love to everyone because my life is filled with, with love, just filled with love. If you follow me on Facebook, you saw where I shared a story uh, of something that happened to me yesterday where I ran into a, an, an ex-client of mine, you know, when I worked in the mental health system. I was at McDonald's and um, the ethical thing to do is like when you when you work mental health and those kind of human services type of jobs when you encounter people that you work with um, as patients and clients you don't acknowledge them unless they acknowledge you and even though I'm retired I still follow that because of ethics it's it's proper ethics so I, I saw this person you know but I didn't speak to them, you know, I just went about my business. They spotted me and I saw them spot me. Their eyes went like this and the, the, the man who I can't tell if he's my age or older, but because of his illness and medication, he looks much older than me, but he came over to me and gave me a, just the most wonderful hug. And um, I'm just going to answer that call in a second. Um, But what he's, you know, and then I left it at that. But he came over while I was ordering and just had to tell me, you know, he had to say, you know, you taught, but you didn't just teach. You showed. You showed me. You showed me a way. I just want to thank you. Out of the blue that happened, it just, you know, and I shared it, but it, because it made my day and it just, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm about. That is what I am about.